We have a woman with us today. I am really honored to interview her, as I am when I get a chance to interview somebody who hasn't really stepped in front of the cameras for a long time. I said to Lillian Roth, when's the last time you have done an interview like this? And she said, I can't even remember. Lillian Roth is the kind of woman about whom it can be said she's had quite a life. You mentioned Lillian Roth, people say she's had quite a life. She was a child star. She grew up too soon. She became an alcoholic for 16 years, 16 years battling back and forth with a bottle. Finally, she was saved uh, by Alcoholics Anonymous. She has been off the bottle for a long time. She's made a couple of comebacks. She's had men walk out on her in her life. She has been up and down and over and out, but she's alive and well, and today is her birthday. So let's sit back, relax, and talk to a woman. I think that her life can be a big inspiration for all of us. A nice welcome for her the one and only Lillian Roth. Happy birthday. Thank you. You didn't tell them how old I was. Thank you. 67 years old? Right. It's okay to say it, huh? Well, of course, my life's an open book. I know. You know I'll cry tomorrow. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Come on, have a seat, Lillian. All right. Just drop that thing. This okay. Cords get in people's way. Don't worry about it. All right. That. I am obviously honored that you would be with us. You haven't really done any interviews in a long time. We have a lot to talk about. I want to begin. I'm, I'm curious at this point, Lillian, if you have a sense of what your life, which has been that kind of up and down and over and out kind of life, what it is a symbol of and what it represents to, to people? Well, I really don't know. I often ask uh, the good Lord, if he thinks I'm Mrs. Job, you know. Long <laughs> suffering, huh? Uh, many trials, but fortunately, uh, no matter how far down it seems to go, there's something I think within all of us that makes you pull out and say, it's going to be all right. Yeah. You know, you work it out day by day. I know. That's the philosophy of the Alcoholics Anonymous, right? Well, that I don't, I must day. say that uh, I don't follow everything uh, of alcohol. I have my own way of thinking. Uh, I talk to God like he was a person. Not, I'm not overzealous, but I say, yeah, you know, let up a little bit. You know, as I call myself God's yo-yo. Uh, -yo, God's yo-yo? Right. Well, where, where, you know, where is the yo-yo today, Lillian? If you have to look at where the yo-yo is, is it down there doing the sleeper? Is it up there going around the world? Is it doing blues? How is it? I don't really know. My life changes from day to day. Uh, I really don't know. What do you want for yourself in the next couple of years? You're 67 now. You've, you'd like to make a film comeback, I know. Well, as that old cliche goes, you know, man proposes, God disposes. It hasn't been easy this past 16 years. I, you know, I don't want to cry, but I will. <laughs> well, what uh, hasn't been uh, easy? The fact that people can't accept you as being oh, a recovered alcoholic? Is that Well, it? yes. Now, you figure, take this book, uh, I'll Cry Tomorrow. After 23 years, it's a big honor. Mr. Frederick Fell brought it back. But nobody lets you forget that you were ever an alcoholic. You mm. live your life. It seems always, oh, she does great. Look how she came back. You know, God gave me a gift before I was an alcoholic. Your talent, my your musical talent, ability, right? And he's not an Indian giver. And I don't like to be always recalled as a recovered alcoholic because I've had my problems in this other 16 years, as we all do. You know, no one wants to hear somebody else's sad story. But it hasn't been easy. But what I've been able to prove, um, is that you can work it out. For instance, in my new book, which I'm calling As Bad As It Was, It Was Good. Uh, <laughs> as bad as it, <laughs> as it was, was, it was, it was good. good. So yeah, that's going to be on my tombstone. Uh, uh, the uh, thing is, I've done many things when it seemed it was impossible. I don't know if you want me to bring it out. Go, talk, here. just relax. But <clears throat> I have an emotional problem. You know, just as I did years ago, I, I was in an institution for mental problems, emotionalism yeah. mostly. And I still have to fight that sort of thing. I'm happy one day, you know, and think this is sure. going to be fine. But you can't expect people to understand your little emotions. Or re I can't stand rejection. Uh, I can speak and sing to the world. I can lecture. But I, I can't, on a social basis, because the sense of values, it seems to me, has faded. You if you're can't not a, what on a social basis? Uh, meet people socially too well. You mean, I, are you shy? 
I'm shy. You're shy. Right. Introverted uh, when it comes to a social basis. You know what I was wondering about, Lillian? I was curious as to whether or not all the ups and downs you've had in your life, if you have any friends at this point, and if you really can, if there are a couple people you can say, yes, that's a friend who was with me when I was up, when I was down. We were talking so about that on the way over in the car. There's one woman I've known for 14 years that has stuck by me. You know, I haven't been all darling. Who is that? Who is that? Virginia Grafton. She met me in a hospital, and she's put me in a couple since, you know, <laughs> in and out. But she has stuck with me when nobody else has. That's true, I have a few... Uh, you know, casual friends, but if you're not there anymore, or either financial wealth or real hot, as they call it in the yeah. profession, or the judge's wife, and the strange part, I've made so many comebacks, uh, they call them comebacks. Yeah, where are you now? Now I'm oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're here. You're not coming or going right now. Yeah. You're here. <laughs> Lillian, I, yeah, go ahead. I, I want to ask, we're going to take a break. We've got mm. plenty of time to talk, mm. but I'm curious about this. Do you think you'll ever have a drink again? I did. Now there's the shocker, I know. When? When? Well, no, well. When? I cannot tell a lie. I don't want you to. Uh, I Today wasn't going you had to. Oh, no, God, no. God, no. Um, no, no, no. I'm not on the bottle at all. When I, I go into what you call a, a periodic once in a while, and that is because I still haven't learned how to face reality. So you still now, have. I had 15 sober years. Then when my husband left me and he took. You know, it reminds me of his, I did the road company of uh, Funny Girl and played yeah. Kay Medford's part. And she's got a line, someone says to her, where is your husband? She says, I don't know, but wherever he is, he should only stay there. That's where my husbands are. <laughs> well, uh, my husband's all abscound with my earnings, and this last one took everything. But everything after 15 years of marriage, you know, and it was a surprise. And here I was with 11 dogs, this big, beautiful... 11 home. dogs? I had 11 dogs. I lived in Palm Springs, California. Had the whole thing, the pool, the cars, and I right. was going to retire. And he didn't like that, I guess, because <laughs> out he went with the bank accounts. And this last 16 years, I've been struggling to survive. Just uh, feeding those dogs just alone, feeding. Lillian, would be tough. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Lillian, I want to take a break. Yeah. Uh, we will be back to continue with Lillian Roth right after this. Don't go away. We've got some beautiful pictures. I'd be a beggar or a name. That's Lillian Roth on record and here with us right now. Lillian, before we look at some really great pictures from your past, you said about a year ago you took a drink. Mm -hmm. Why? What forced you to take a drink when you knew it was po like poisoning yourself? Oh, I did it once before when my husband, um, after 15 years of marriage, emptied out the bank account and left me busted. I did it then, too, but I came right out of it. I've had a... a I don't think you ever completely beat alcoholism. Fortunately, I, I believe mine is more escapism. I don't ever do it when I'm working or anything, but I go into it... I don't like to talk about depressions. People have so many problems of their own, but unfortunately, there's something in my... Noodle, or I wouldn't have been in the Westchester Division in New York Hospital when I was younger, uh, that causes these depressions, and I get a hopeless feeling and lonely, uh, which we but all in spite get. But in spite of the but, fact that you know you shouldn't drink, you still did at that oh, time. Oh, well, I, I think that we sort of destroy ourselves. It's a destructive, slow suicide. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does it. You can be alone in the apartment, and all of a sudden you just... You find get, yourself... Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm curious about this, and uh, I, give me a real straight answer. This is a question, physical question about you physically. When one drinks for as long as you did for 16 years and you really... It killed me. It's what has it me. done to you? It's killed me. <laughs> How about I'm your brain? Can, can you think as oh, well? No, as? Oh, no. Fortunately, I still have my brain. Uh, well, listen, some of your best writers and artists were alcoholics. I know. But uh, I, I don't have any trouble with... Uh, but you, I don't... You look, but, but no, I know I look... Uh, I'm In fact, I'm on a diet. I look too healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> nobody has any compassion at all for, for a little plumpy. Well, um, not necessarily. I don't know. But what do you think? You have compassion for this woman, don't you? I don't want compassion. Yes. No. No, but don't no. feel that way. Let's look at some pictures from the, from right. the past. Just I was, run down these and tell us where you were at these times. I was 13 and a half years old in the first picture. Big, tall, Where did down. you live then? I lived in New York. I was born in Boston. All right. The Let's... second one up there, I was 18, and Paramount tried to make me the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> Paramount did pictures. they succeed? Well, I don't know, but some of my husbands did. Okay, they we'll move over me. to the next one. 
uh, the next one was also, uh, par no, that's when I went to work for Earl Carroll. What did you oh, think the they were trying to do with you, posing you like that, making you into oh, well, I was girl? the No, no, I was the legs girl before Dietrich. She came on the lot a little before me. Oh, I uh, see. Uh, and uh, we used, uh, they both tried, you know, they wanted us to go in for the legs. How are your legs today? They're fine. Good. <laughs> Thank you, but who wants to see 67 year shot. old legs? The Ritz brothers? The Ritz brothers and my dear little husband, the judge. Judge Shalik, you sweet thing. Okay, we'll move over. We got, a, we got another shot. You don't see the Ritz brothers in bathing suits that much. Yeah, anymore. that's up at Crow Singers. Oh, you were uh, working there, right? No, no. We were up there sort of just fooling around. Uh, Harry, I, I thought he was the greatest comic. He used to play cards up there, and a little kid would come by, and he'd look at him, and he'd say, how would you do last night? <laughs> the little kids, he was so cute. What movie is this from? <laughs> that was Madam Satan, Cecil B. DeMille's Madam Satan uh, for MGM. They barred me from Paramount, and I played a iniquitous vampire. <laughs> oh, I yeah. see. All They're back the in ages. fashion now, you know. Yeah, 19. And the uh, other picture, yeah, that's with Kay Johnson. She was the wife and I was the other woman in the thing, and she you, surprised me. You had, you know, another, uh, there's another famous uh, biography uh, by Diana Barrymore, Too Much, Too, too Soon. soon. Mm -hmm. I often compare that to I'll Cry, I'll Cry Tomorrow, your biography. And I wonder whether or not, is that part of what your problem was, that you just made it too soon? You didn't have no, to struggle? No, mine wasn't the same. In fact, Gerald Frank, who worked with me in I'll Cry, did my book first, and then did Diana's. I'll cry tomorrow, but um, hers uh, was a straight drinking problem. Mine had emotionalism with it, because my first drink, uh, actually, I was 17 and I got sick from it and never drank again and I was uh, and got sick from that one. And then I never drank again until a nurse gave it to me after my first boyfriend that I was going to marry died. And a nurse used to give it to me for medication. And what, what did the nurse, what kind of drink did the nurse actually give uh, you, Lillian? Just a, just a good slug to put me to sleep. And I, it was just great. She didn't know that it was going to put you to sleep for 16 <laughs> years. <laughs> Have you but, been back in touch with this nurse? Maybe you could get uh, no, I think she's an ex post facto malpractice suit would be good. Well, after all, they don't know which ones are going to become alcoholics. And then it needed more and more as time went on. I just kept wanting to sleep all the time. You know what I'd like to do? I was reading your book. And I'd like to read a little bit from the book. I haven't in all these years. Do you know that? You haven't read I'll Cry Tomorrow in all these years? After the proofreading, I never read it. That's 23 years ago. I'm going to read a little bit from the book, and then I'd like to stop and just have you comment about it, oh. and then continue on. And I'm reading from a section, I think, that really describes in really vivid terms, almost one, one and a half pages, your descent from being a, one kind of a drinker to another kind of a drinker to another kind of a drinker. Let me just read this and then mm -hmm. give us some of your thoughts on this. Soon you were on a fifth a day, taking the stuff slowly, a drink or two every four or five hours, then every three hours, then two hours, finally every hour, then a court through the day and a court through the night, and if you weren't drinking too swiftly, you reached a kind of sober drunk where you weren't hung over. Right. Sober drunk not hung over. Did people know that you were an alcoholic at this point? Could you function? Could you fool people? No, I couldn't ever fool anyone because I couldn't fool myself. Did you? I was, an, I was a stay-at-home uh, uh, when I drank like that. And when I drank like that, it was around the clock and all I wanted was a oblivion. Okay. Uh, but there was a certain time physically when if you could hold enough in your system after you'd been drinking heavily uh, and say eight hours passed, if you could hold enough, it would stabilize you, and then you would appear sober. You would appear sober, and almost probably be fooling yourself. But then you. But, but not the people, because yeah, I'm too. They knew. Uh, they knew my, okay. my own guilt showed. You go on to say, as the years went on, something terrifying happened. You couldn't hold as much. You began to it up. One part of you cried, "I want it." The other part cried, "I can't take it." Your body reached a point of revolt. You simply could not hold it. You drank, and you threw it up. You were sick all the time. Sometimes you vomited all morning before your stomach retained an ounce of it, the drink your body needed so desperately. Same things happen. At that point, aren't you really aware that you're desperately ill? Don't you say to yourself, I gotta, I gotta get help, I have to check myself in. Well, you may do that, but the point is, uh, at that point,
point, it's a lot, I've worked with drug addicts and, you know, and worked with alcoholics. It, it's a drug and you're so far down into it and you're suffering so that you can't think of, oh, I'm going to get a hospital or I'm going to stop. You can't stop that minute. You go into a convulsion. What do you, you think? You might die from it. And also, you just, uh, mentally it hits you, so you really don't care anymore. What do you think, Lillian Roth, when you are driving down the street in a taxi or walking down the street and you see someone lying in the doorway, someone who is obviously a victim of, of the bomb. Well, uh, uh, when feel? I see somebody that's like that, I go over and I give them money to get a drink. I don't give them an AA lecture. You give them money to get a drink? Yes, Why? because they're suffering. And there's, there's, I can't cure them or help them that minute. Nobody can do that till they're ready. But they must be helped to take away the agonies they're going through. That's interesting. And Because uh, so many people feel you, you get, it's like giving a man a drunk, uh, it's like giving him more poison. It's, well, it's you might be saving him from convulsions or, you know, the terrible GTs. And if they're lying there uh, so suffering, uh, well, that's what I do. What's the, what's the worst thing you ever drank when you had to? Well, I always stuck to liquor, and I don't know. I always seemed to, as I was, I never got cheap stuff. My father, God rest his soul, always said, eat and sleep the best. And he liked a few drinks himself. Yeah. So as bad, you know, I have a very hard time even now financially. Yeah. But I always lived well. I still have a lovely apartment and try to the best of my ability and support five or six dogs. And You're, you're down and, from 11, I noticed. Yes. Yeah. Well, some of them died, you know, a lot of years have well, passed. I always get my dogs from the bite we hold. When one dies, I get another one, you know? And, uh... Well, I tell you, Lillian... Well, all right, about the suffering, I want you to know, and for any alcoholics that might be listening, don't think because you've 15 years that it's... You want me to talk to them, to you? Talk to them. Well, it, it, because uh, you... Fortunately, I'm not one. No, I so. know. Well, what I mean is, if you, just because you're off for 15 years, it doesn't mean that when you go back or if you take a couple that it's ever going to change its pattern you're going to be just a sick horrors it's going to attack the same physical spots you're going to go through the same madness and you're going to be just miserable so if you're all of it try to stay off of it because you never know i'm fortunate in is that whatever it is my emotional problem i am able to, to, to recognize the symptoms and try to fight out of it. But if anyone is sober out there, please don't take the chance and say, oh, well, she, she's sobered again. Maybe you won't the next time, you see? And Lillian, it, it is a miserable life. It's there's, awful. There's no question. And nobody ever lets you forget you, it. You go into other things that uh, even describe worse symptoms, but let's take a break. And